Tenekato katoa. Hi, I'm Trevor James, freshwater scientist from Tasman District Council, responsible for uh, our wetlands and freshwater systems like lakes and rivers, and uh, both restoration and also the ecology and water quality monitoring. I have the privilege of leading uh, uh, two projects for the Freshwater Improvement Fund for Tasman District, including this one about wetlands. This part of the wetland project is about constructed wetlands. So these are wetlands where it might be just pasture at the moment. This is um, pretty much no wetland existing there at the moment. And we're creating new wetlands. So most, uh, most of the constructed wetlands that we uh, uh, plan to build are for treating degraded surface water. But they all enhance biodiversity to some degree. And some of the wetland construction programs that we've got are targeting specific communities or ecosystems. In this video, I'll introduce you to a five year project set up to construct seven wetlands in Tasman District. If you've watched the video about restoring natural, vit, uh, natural wetlands in Tasman District, you'll know why this is important. Along with natural wetlands, uh, this project has a value of just over four million. I'd like to acknowledge now our partners in this project, the iwi and landowners, for their support of the project. So the objectives of this project are to improve water quality and stream flow for the cultural uh, benefits of improving Mahinga Kai, particularly tuna and other food resources, the Māori, the spiritual values and biodiversity. The picture in this slide is a recently constructed uh, wetland to treat runoff from a dairy farm not far from Te Waikurupupu Springs. This has been a partnership with Niwa and of course local uh, Farmer, I'd love, like to acknowledge their input. So the targets, I've mentioned seven constructed wetlands. We hope uh, that along with the nat Natural Wetlands Project, there'll be over 40,000 hours of nature-based employment, 26 full-time equivalents, and lots of plants. So what's involved? Here's a schematic of uh, a constructed wetland system for treating uh, uh, contaminated uh, stormwater runoff. Not all of them as highly as engineered as this with pipes and so forth. Uh, but they're essentially um, getting native wetland plants to do the work to remove um, these contaminants from waterways and catchments. So it often involves um, uh, intercepting the water that's flowing down small valley systems, uh, usually less than 20 hectares and certainly less than 50 hectares in size, intercepting that water, creating um, deeper pond environments and uh, planting those out. So in this slide you'll see that uh, the, um, the first pond is uh, a deeper pond where the sediment will be trapped and then it'll uh, filter over the land and then through a series of uh, other ponds that will be planted with wetland vegetation. How, how do we know that they work? Well, Niwa has done a lot of research into this, and uh, it's really important that your constructed wetlands are uh, of a sufficient size. And Niwa have researched, their research shows that it has to be 1 to 3% of the overall upstream catchment to actually effectively remove these contaminants of sediment, nitrogen, phosphorus, and disease causing organisms. The, uh, uh, E. coli and uh, um, Jardia and uh, Cryptosporidium. So the removal rates are set here, reasonably efficient, 50% uh, for over 50% for nitrogen and phosphorus, and the sediment can be up to 90% of removal. So here's another examples of these uh, constructed wetlands. Here's another one in the Motopipi catchment. Uh, this one restore the stream as well as uh, reconnecting it with the floodplain through this gully. Here is it afterwards, so before and afterwards. So the wetland plants 
to be most efficient at taking up these contaminants, we do select uh, particular native plants. And these are those that have deep root penetration, strong rhizomes, large fibrous roots. And here are some of the examples of species we, we choose. So the seven wetlands will be spread through Golden Bay and uh, then through uh, more coastal areas of Tasman Bay. The Motawika Delta is one of these. Uh, it's an area of farmland, uh, Department of Conservation land, where we hope to specifically bring back uh, Matuku or Australasian bittern. But along with the Matuku, you'll get uh, Teikotuku, the white heron, Marsh Creek, and lots of other species. In order to have these bird species though, you need to have fish. So you have to think about the whole ecosystem. So inanga and other uh, whitebait species in particular. Some of the challenges, we will need resource consents for, for these and the uh, challenges to also make sure that they're affordable. So more and more people can uh, put wetlands to intercept contaminants on their uh, land as well. We do have some further resources if you're interested. The Dairy NZ website as well as a uh, guideline for constructed wetlands uh, produced by NIWA. So the next steps for this project is to employ two project managers and a Māori liaison officer we will work with a technical advisory panel and get peer review to make sure this project is as effective and efficient as possible. And we'll engage contractors for on the ground work and this will be done through the supply panel probably uh, later on this spring. Thank you. Kia ora.